Hi, this is just a short video on how to use the Guitar Tab Editor in Logic Pro and how to handle the arrangement of your Guitar Tab. Um, I found this quite useful and there's not that much information out there so I thought I'd share this and hopefully it's helpful to some people. So I've got a really simple guitar part here which I'll just play back and it's just playing a piano sound. So you probably know that there is a score editor in Logic Pro so you just double click to open the piano roll and then switch over to score. Really basic part, just to demo this. And you can also open and close that score view with the N shortcut, so it's just a quick way in. Uh, the other way to get at that is Command 5, which gives us the full screen view, which is a little better to work with. And you can change how it lays it out. You can have the timeline or have it all fit on one page, which I find a little easier. So we'll work with this. Okay, so by default we have a treble clef and musical notation, and we want to change that into guitar tab. So we come to layout and show staff styles. And depending on the music you've got, you may find that there's like a bass clef already in there or something if it's like coming from a piano part. Uh, so if you want to get rid of a clef, you just uh, select the clef here so that, that row is blue and selected, and we press delete, and that gets rid of that. Um, so what we've got to do is switch from the treble clef into the tab guitar stuff here. And once we do that, it's automatically changed it into tab. And you could have both. You could add another staff and have notation and tab together if you wanted by just adding another one here. So we've got our guitar tab. Problem is, Logic's done the best it can to arrange this for a guitar player. And essentially, it's putting everything on the, uh, the lowest string that it can put it on. So for this quite high-pitched melody, we end up with everything um, you know, on the high E string, which is obviously very difficult to play. So this is where I got a little stuck when I first started experimenting with this, because to me it seemed like the easiest way to fix this would be to just sort of drag this note down onto the row below, but when you click and drag down, what happens is we start chromatically scrolling through, and, uh, you know, we can move it to another, another string, but only when the note necessitates that. So that's kind of no good. So we'll go back to where we started. So turns out the way Logic handles this is the channel assignment. So if you were to change the channel assignment, that would change the string that it's positioned on. But first of all, you want to change that in your project settings to something a little more useful. So we go to project settings and score, and then we come to the tablature section here. And you see that by default, these MIDI channels are handled on what it calls the pitch assignment. Um, you're going to want to change it to channel or inverse channel. Um, lots of people like inverse channel because that means that the channel uh, relates to the number of the string in the way that we're more used to saying. So channel number one is your high E string and channel number six is your low E string. Um, which, which makes sense, but I'm actually going to use just the standard channel one and you'll see why in a moment. I find this easier to work on. So once I've selected that, you'll see that uh, everything's moved onto the low E string because now it's assigned to channel number one, which we've just told it to be the low E string. So now if I select this note and change the channel, we change the string we've got. So I'm gonna select everything and move it all to channel number six. So everything goes back on the high E string where we started. And now we can, you know, we can move things around by just choosing the note and changing the channel assignment. Oh, that, that went up too many from that move before, but there you go. So you can see as I choose the channel, we move the string. Problem is, it will be really time consuming to just work through the whole thing that way, click, 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 click. So a nice way to improve this is to set yourself a keyboard shortcut. So you're going to want to come into Logic Pro, Key Commands, and Edit, and you need to search for Event Channel. So I've already got that search in, but you'll come in and look like this. Just type in the search Event Channel and you'll find these two, event channel plus one and event channel minus one. Now I've already set my shortcuts, but by default there won't be anything set, so you'll have to come in and teach it. So you choose choose the appropriate one, click learn by key position, and come up with whatever shortcut you want. But I found command shift up and command shift down were free, so I've used command shift up for plus one and command shift down for down one. So with that set, all you've got to do is choose your note, hit command shift down, and it moves down a string. And that works because we're moving the mini channel down a number, which moves down a string. So for me, this kind of up-down thing works, because now when I press down, it goes down a string. When I press up, it goes up a string. So just going back to those project settings that we looked at for the uh, score section and tablature, 
Uh, that's why I prefer channel to inverse channel. So e even though it's not what we're used to in the guitar world, where you know, we're now saying string number one is our low E, which isn't quite right, I, I still find it easier to work this way. So I'd recommend doing it like that, but obviously do what works best for you. Um, so now that you've got that set, it's really easy to rearrange this for a guitar player. So I'm just going to use uh, the arrow keys to work around the score. Just left and right selects different notes. And my new shortcut, command shift down, plus those project settings we've got makes it really easy to go ahead and make that into something that would be easier for a guitar player to play. And there we go. We've now got something that a guitar player could read. And um, while you're in the uh, score editor here, you can go ahead and annotate that. If you come to your part box, you can switch to guitar notation. And there's a preset here for the kind of things you might want to add for a guitar player, if you're going to share this notation with someone else. Um, but that's kind of all you need to know. So I hope that's helpful. What I'll do is I will save this project and I'll put a link to download it in the uh, video description. So if it's helpful for you to have a look at this, you can go ahead and download that and check it out. So hope this helps you. Thanks for watching.